Yo, what is up everybody, and welcome back to another Madden 21 online CFM game. We are now in week 17 of the 2022 season here in the Premier Madden League. It's the regular season finale for what has been quite the roller coaster of a 2022 season for our Detroit Lions. This is just one last tune-up before next season more than anything else as we try to look onwards to Season 4 of this CFM. The Cardinals are also going to use this game as a tune-up, but they're going to be tuning up for the playoffs. The Cardinals have already clinched the NFC West division, so they're looking ahead of Wild Card Weekend. There's a chance some Cardinals starters do not play in this game, so this is going to be for fun more than anything else as we are underway. Nothing on the line for the Lions or the Cardinals in this one, except for slight playoff seeding, but... And, you know, of course, draft pick positioning for our Detroit Lions, whether we win or lose the game. But it won't be anything too drastic. Losing the game won't put us in the top five of the draft order. So it's not something we're really going to focus on. We're just going to try to, you know, play some good football. And if we win the game, cool. If we don't, oh well. So Kenny and Drake ends up getting the first down here. And, you know, that approach the last couple of weeks has led to some solid action from our Detroit Lions, especially as the game wears on. As Kenny and Drake gets a nice run, but there actually is a flag on the play. And if it's holding... It's going to come all the way back, and it is holding on the wide receiver, Zay Jones. So, Cardinals will have to start the 47-yard line with Brent Hundley at the quarterback position. Downfield, intercepted. It's Eric Stokes. As we continue to develop our roster, Eric Stokes has been one of the shining stars in the second half of this season. He seems to be good for about an interception a game. Drew Locke. Downfield, Debo with space, and Byron Murphy felt it. Flag on the play. It's defensive pass interference, so move the Lions to the 37-yard line. Drew Locke looking to pass, looking to continue putting up the impressive stats he has in the past couple of games, but that's not going to help. Missing an open receiver, this won't help either. Hitting Debo on the screen, but he goes backward. Third down and 13 for Drew Locke. Stepping up, hit as he throws, and missing a Monra St. Brown. It looked like St. Brown had some space to make a catch, but unfortunately, the pocket broke down on lock so we end up punting the ball right back to Arizona but once again you know you are checking out the young guys feeling out how they're playing and of course evaluating Drew Locke and with this being the regular season finale you know the window is definitely open for Matt Stafford to see some snaps in this game you know especially in the fourth quarter if things get out of hand one way or the other you know we might give Matt Stafford one last farewell in a Detroit Lions uniform because there's no guarantee Stafford can come back on our team even as a backup considering the salary he might be asking for third down Cardinals they find Chase Edmonds at the backfield and Edmonds is going to get the first down so this is Hunley's show right now we don't really see much of DeAndre Hopkins either uh, mostly you know defensive stars are playing this game but not too many on the offensive end Kenny and Drake gets by Tracy Walker and scores the touchdown Drake sneaks through for six Cardinals on top and Drake is usually a backup on this Cardinals team backing up Naheem Hines but the superstar starter for the Cardinals is actually injured and will be injured for the upcoming week so this could be Kenyon Drake's team as far as you know touches out of the backfield and he's making the most of it right now as Ty Johnson trying to bounce around do his thing gets to the 21 yard line next play Drew Locke intercepted middle of the field that's a gimme and it's gonna go if Drew Locke can't stop him for six and the Cardinals rack off two quick touchdowns in this game and Drew Locke if he continues to throw interceptions and look shaky then that can open the door for Matt Stafford potentially seeing snaps sooner in this game as um, for some reason Madden decided to give this guy the ball the one yard line to kick his PAT after I was doing my little dancing around with Bobby Wagner and accidentally went offside so we go down early in this game but the past couple of games we have been facing early deficits and like I mentioned before we've been able to actually make some pretty solid adjustments as the game has worn on but not much you can do when Thomas comes through and jumps over the running back gets the sack second down oh Monra St. Brown with a monster grab for the first down as we find Debo underneath Debo making the catch and this wide receiver core of the Detroit Lions has been shining in the last couple of games the top four wide receivers including Tyquan Thornton as we have Stafford in the game and Matt Stafford slinging it to John Emery Stafford once again at the quarterback position fires a laser to Kenny Galladay and how about this Matt Stafford up high Galladay what a grab no my 
might have been broken up at the last second either way. Delayed call as that's going to be intercepted by the Arizona Cardinals after Kenny couldn't get the catch. That's going to be a turnover. And it was actually Drew Locke throwing the interception. So I go back to Drew Locke for a play and we end up getting picked off. So that, that might be a sign. Third down to five in the meantime. Honolulu, no time to throw the ball. The blitz by the Lions comes home. It's Trey Flowers' ninth sack of the season entering this game Aquara and Trey Flowers both had eight sacks apiece so that's gonna give Trey Flowers the lead in the clubhouse meanwhile it's Stafford he's gonna fire it in the corner to Tyquan Thornton and Matt Stafford is looking sharp in this game he continues his hot streak finding Kenny Galladay the only incompletion was that pass to Kenny earlier that was nearly a touchdown oh Matt Stafford squeezing it in to Tyquan Thornton that was the tightest of cover and Drew Locke comes right back in and nearly throws the pick to Byron Murphy. It's Stafford this time up high. Galladay. This time he hangs on for the touchdown. Lions on the board. And it comes from the arm of Matthew Stafford. Now the one goal we had entering this game. Slight goal. Not too important. But since it's there we might as well go for it. Is trying to get Kenny Galladay to be the leading receiver in the league this season. As far as receiving yards. He needs about 90 yards to pass Stefan Diggs entering this game so that's definitely a doable achievement and we're doing a pretty good job of that so far getting Kenny involved he might be pretty close already midway in the second quarter and especially with Stafford in that quarterback no reason to think Kenny won't get it after the timeout the Cardinals nearly throw an interception and it's going to be a three and out for the Cardinals offense and the Lions suddenly Finding some sparks with Matt Stafford in. They're going to get the ball right back. Looking to tie this game up. So, slow start for us. But now, we're starting to turn things around. Drew Locke is in. And he's going to get intercepted by Buddha Baker on the return. Buddha's getting blocks. Buddha, boom. Drew Locke brought him down. But another interception for Drew Locke as he splits carries with Matt Stafford. And seemingly throws a pick whenever he steps in as we have Kenny and Drake outside. Cardinals have been running the ball a lot in this first half. Drake has already amassed 12. Make it 13 carries. That run not going to get anything. In fact, Tyvai brings him down for about a loss of three. Drake, though, he's resilient. He's right back at it. And he nearly battles for the first down. Third down and short as the second quarter winds down. This is Zach Moss. Oh, we tried to swing around but Jeremiah Moon with a good grasp brings up a fourth down in inches Cardinals offense on the field they're gonna hand off to Kenny and Drake and they get the first down as we go to the two minute warning as we have a goal to go man in motion say Jones battles all the way for the touchdown Man, you know, that fourth down play, I did not even think he could get that snap off for the two-minute warning. So I just picked the play, and I just dropped the controller, and he just ran for the first down really quick. So uh, kudos to him for getting that quick snap off. But, yeah, we just didn't have a defense set up for that play, so we didn't really give ourselves a chance. Nonetheless, you know, we bring Drew Locke back on the field after the interception outside of Monterey St. Brown. But, you know, we're getting a true evaluation of how this offense looks with Drew Locke in the game versus Matt Stafford. Because as we rotate the two quarterbacks, there does seem to be a noticeable difference, and it's not a Good look for Drew Locke as far as his chances of coming back on this team next season. Right on cue, Drew Locke out of bounds to Kenny Galladay. Now, we knew that Matt Stafford was the better quarterback throughout the season, but it was just how much could Drew Locke develop as the season went on. And, you know, we're in week 17, and we haven't seen too much out of Locke compared to what Stafford brings to the table. Fourth down, Stafford with the ball here, outside, Thornton for the first down. And, you know, those kind of passes outside have been the throws that Drew Locke has not exactly excelled at this season. Meanwhile, this is Matt Stafford's game. Fearless, outside, finding Galladay. Next play, a Amonra St. Brown gets the catch from Drew Locke. Now it's Stafford, middle, Galladay again. Second touchdown of the half for Kenny Galladay, who looks to be on his way to being the leading receiver in the league for the second time in three seasons. Of course, Galladay led the league in season one as well. Season two, an injury play season for Kenny Galladay, but when that man is healthy, he is one of the top wide receivers, no doubt about it. About it. Also, one of the top wide receivers that was a Monra St. Brown. Whoa, that's a fumble. That's a fumble picked up by Jeremiah Moon. Out of control. Completely out of control. Or else that could have potentially been a touchdown. This is a touchdown to Kenny Galladay on the very next play. A hat trick in the first half. It is most definitely the Galladay season. This is Galladay season 
as he establishes himself as the number one receiver in terms of receiving yardage and also tops there in touchdown catches as well I believe in the top five in that area and then you know you throw a Monra St. Brown in who's also top 10 in fact I believe he's top five in receiving yardage right now so you got those two guys, Debo Samuel, and whoever is the quarterback next season for these Detroit Lions, they're set up pretty well. So this might be a very, you know, promising hotspot for, you know, whether we draft a quarterback or free agency, even trades. It's going to be a, whoever, you know, is an upcoming free agent or anything like that, whoever is going to be available, they'll want to sign with the Detroit Lions. We'll see how that all plays out. In the meantime, winding down this second quarter, it's a tie game, 21-21. Hunley handing it off to Kenny and Drake, who just got his 18th carry of the first half. This is borderline ridiculous how much the Cardinals have been running the ball in this first half. Third down and three, Drake is the back and he's gonna get the ball the snap from Kyler Murray and nearly gets the first down but that was Bobby Wagner bringing up a fourth down in inches and the Cardinals offense actually on the field here and they're gonna hand it off to Drake and he's not gonna get it Bobby Wagner stuffing it Oh, he completely stuffed the gap. Wagner with back-to-back -back deflating tackles and a turnover on downs. And even if Bobby Wagner loses a step for next season, he's definitely going to be a big part of this defense. He's been playing spectacularly well the past couple of games. And how about a Monterey St. Brown making that catch and getting out of bounds with eight seconds left? Here's Drew Locke outside. Intercepted by Hargraves. Looking for a Monterey on the sidelines. Locke is blocked. And a shoestring tackle by Amonra St. Brown saves the pick six to end the first half. The game will be tied as we go to the halftime locker room and the halftime show. For the final time in the regular season, we have an extended halftime show this time around. Act one, winner go home. There were three games in this final week of the regular season where you either won the game and made the playoffs or you lost it and you got to sit on the couch with the Detroit Lions. It looked like the Denver Broncos were going to be on the couch, but they were able to rebound, but they were not able to tackle Matt Burrito, who got his second long touchdown of the first half, but the Broncos continue to battle back. They tied the game with Sony Michelle. They were leaning on the rushing attack all game long, and the Dolphins did the same, finding Brees Hall in the end zone, but here come the Broncos right back. Tie the game up in the fourth quarter. It's going down to the wire with a playoff spot on the line, and how about this? Fourth down in inches. Dolphins go for it. Dolphins get the touchdown. They could have tied the game, but they went for it all. It works out for them. And now Spencer Rattler. Oh, trying to force overtime, but he forces the pass to his superstar, Judy. And the Dolphins finish 9-7. and seven. They get the 7th seed in the NFC Conference. Meanwhile, the 6th seed in the NFC. Actually, that's the AFC the Dolphins got in the NFC Conference. It's a battle between the Seahawks. And the Washington football team, and the game gets tied up. Russell Wilson using that escape artist to his advantage. But a bursting run by Washington, getting out of the jam and getting the touchdown. And suddenly, this game got out of hand. The defending conference champions push to the edge of even making the playoffs, but they look like a sure bet to move on to next week. But hold on just a second. Russell Wilson's not going to give up just like that. Whoop! Devontae Freeman just signed out of free agency and looking fresh, giving the team a spark. And this is going to ignite the fire. A pick for six. And then it's Russell Wilson rolling the pocket left side. Wide open. DK Metcalf and the Seahawks have nearly rallied their way all the way back. But... Keyword almost as they give up a back-breaking touchdown that's going to end their season and improve Washington to 9-7. They'll make the playoffs. Finally, the battle for the last wildcard spot here. The sixth seed in the AFC is between Tennessee and Houston. And Tennessee is going to get Kevin Byard in for six off the Deshaun Watson interception and Deshaun Watson struggled throughout this game, but this will help out Houston mightily. It's offense, defense, and special teams. And special teams shines on the final play of the first half, but the defense of Tennessee was the story of the day. It's Cisco, the fellow safety, who gets the pick and takes it back for six. Our former Dolphins friend, Lynn J. Dixon somehow bounces around and gets the touchdown. Texans hung in there as long as they could, but at the end of the day, 
King Henry stole the show at the end. On fire, gets the touchdown. Here comes the dagger. King Henry helps the Titans make the playoffs as he and Aaron Rodgers look to make a push in the postseason. Texans season, meanwhile, is done. Now we go to Act 2, the quest of perfection. There were two teams entering this week that were 15-0 looking for the perfect regular season. Both teams already have the number one seed in their respective divisions clinch, the Buccaneers and the Chargers. So you'll see some backups throughout, but... You know, they'll still fight. They'll still try to make it a perfect 16-0. Tampa Bay, though, was not looking good in the first half of the game. The backup struggled, but as Tampa Bay has done all season long, they started pulling out that second half magic. It's going to be Vaughn getting the handoff from Marcus Mariota, and Tampa Bay gets their first lead of the game in the fourth quarter, and suddenly it looks like 16-0 is possible. Joe Hayden skying up high over Michael Thomas and talking trash afterwards. Then it's Vaughn on the pitch for the two-possession lead, and that is pretty much all she wrote. Or was it? Because here comes Trey Lance downfield in the corner. And the Saints are going to try to put up a fight. They already have a playoff position clinch. So they're not really going to fight this one too hard. And eventually, it is going to be, yes, a Tampa Bay victory. They get the 16-0 perfect record the first time this cycle in the league can the chargers match them well they've got quite the matchup it's against the 1 and 14 los angeles rams so uh yeah definitely a mismatch on paper and unlike tampa bay who needed a lot of second half comebacks to keep their undefeated season going this is the way the chargers got it done domination pure domination the rams got the 3-0 lead and you know that might have been quote unquote upset alert but since then you know, this was the better team from Los Angeles. It was the Chargers. They also moved to 16-0. And both teams now get to celebrate by having a week off by being the number one seed. They'll get ready for the divisional round as the New England Patriots. They're wildcard weekend bound, but will they win their division? The AFC East is on the line, and the Patriots need to win this game to keep their chances alive. But look at the Fonte Adams over Stephon Gilmore. Wow! Gets the touchdown, but the Patriots bounce back in the third quarter. Phillip Lindsay knifing his way through the Packers defense. And the man, oh man, the Patriots go to 13-3 and, and they're having some fun in Lambeau. But if the Patriots win to win the AFC East, they need the Buffalo Bills to lose. And the Buffalo Bills were going to do anything but lose. Playing like this. Also in the snow. They're playing against Kansas City. And the Bills officially win the AFC East. There was snow all around. How about a snowy Philadelphia where Darius Slay gets the pick. He's going for six. This was a meaningless game between two teams already setting up for the playoffs. As Carson Wentz downfield finds Ragor who tight ropes the sidelines. And Ragor rockets away for a Philadelphia victory. A confidence boost nonetheless for those Eagles and the final snow game took place between the Raiders and the CPU Jets two teams near the bottom of the standings in the league but that's actually pretty important for our Detroit Lions because the Raiders win this game and they actually raised the draft pick on us remember we have the Raiders first round pick so that wasn't too helpful for us. Nonetheless, Raiders finished the season 5-11. and 11. And now, finally, Act 4. Let's wrap up this halftime show and find a couple of big plays that happened around the league that, you know, weren't big gains and weren't snow gains, but definitely big catches nonetheless. Nico Collins in the corner. That catch had everything, including a Falcons victory in the corner. Mills intercepted. Harry Nickerson swerving the last man, and he is all the way gone. Bears get a win to cap off what has been a frustrating season. And finally, a frustrating season also for the Dallas Cowboys, but they'll end it off with a victory over the New York Giants, who are also preparing for the playoffs, not having much on the line. So that's going to do it for the final halftime show of the regular season. Now we conclude one more game. Lions 
versus Cardinals. Who's going to win this game? Who knows? Everything is on the table right now as Ty Johnson gets the ball to start this second half. Nice spin move by Ty, but he pays the price at the end of the day. The quarterback situation is completely up in the air right now for Detroit. Seems like they're rotating quarterbacks at will, but it seems to be more Matt Stafford than Locke. And when Matt Stafford's in, man, you can tell this guy is slinging the rock. He is threading the needle. He is making all the throws, sidelines, middle of the field. He's doing it all as John Emery spinning and getting crushed by Isaiah Simmons. But he hangs on somehow. Next play, it's Stafford wide open. Debo Samuel all the way to the 14-yard line. What an opening drive at a halftime for the Lions. And it continues to march forward. Amadra St. Brown with the catch in traffic. Next play, John Emery got some blocks. Trying to run over Buddha Baker, who's able to wrestle him down one yard short of the end zone. Amonra in motion, and Amonra St. Brown gets the touchdown. Lions score a touchdown. It's not Kenny Galladay this time around, but it's their other superstar wide receiver. Amonra St. Brown in his sophomore season truly exploding onto the scene. His rookie season was already electric, but Amonra had quite the encore. And in season three, who knows what Amonra St. Brown can bring to the table because looking at the stats, Amonra St. Brown actually led the league this season in receiving yards per game entering this regular season finale. So, you know, if anybody's going to lead the league in receiving, it might come out of Detroit, but between Kenny Galladay and Amonra St. Brown, who knows which receiver it's going to be. As That's actually a stop on third down. That was quite the play by Will Harris to keep the containment and allowing Jeff Okuda, who has been doing a solid job of making tackles in the second half of this season, to bring down the running back short of the first down. The Cardinals on fourth down and inches. They punt the Ball is Ty Johnson making some nice moves, getting the first down. It's Matt Stafford after Locke had the previous play, and Stafford just going to throw it away on first down. Nothing to do there, but how about this 16 for 20 performance? Trying to go 17 for 21, but nearly got intercepted instead. I would have a Snowden who actually caught the ball, but out of bounds. Third down and 10 instead for Stafford, finding St. Brown, and a moderate St. Brown gets the first down. The Cardinals excel in man-to-man -man coverage, but you see how these... Wide receivers are getting some great separation, mainly St. Brown and Kenny Galladay. Debo not so much on that play as John Emery gets what has been, you know, rare touches in the running game in this back end of our season as we have Drew Locke in the game. Locke, he squeezes it. There you go, Drew Locke. Make throws like that and, you know, maybe you can stick around. Finding a Monroe for the first down. Next play, Stafford fires. Intercepted by Byron Murphy. And Murphy with Stafford to beat. Gets the block and he's gone. Byron Murphy's gonna, after the PAT upcoming, probably tie this game up. So it looked like our Detroit Lions were about to run away with this one and suddenly a back-breaking pick six, which was slightly attributed to the fact that Amon St. Brown was tired. He was working pretty hard, so we had Tyquan Thornton in that spot and... Like I mentioned, the Cardinals, you know, they have some solid man coverage and just a great secondary across the board with Isaiah Simmons and Buda Baker playing deep. So having guys like Kenny and Amandra has really helped us. But on that play, everything just went down. So how do we rebound? We start off with Kenny Galladay out of bounds. Stafford working on a 300-yard performance when he didn't even start the game as Drew Locke gets sacked quickly. Slightly unblocked man right there. Awkward looking play. Stafford now in third down. Five wide. Good pocket. Looking for Kenny. But maybe missed the mark a little bit. Otherwise, airtight coverage. And we punt the ball right back to the Cardinals. So everything was looking smooth for us. And suddenly, it seems to be falling apart as we start the fourth quarter as the Cardinals. Still looking to run this ball a lot. I don't know what's up with teams running the ball a lot at the end of the season. But... I mean, whatever. I guess we just got to deal with whatever the elements are being presented to us. Third down, though. It's going to be a pass attempt for Huntley. Underneath. Fleeks. Crushed by... Oh, what was that? Right. But he still gets the first down. But can they survive this new set of downs? Let's see. Because D4 just got the second first. Second down. Up high. It's Hopkins. Who seems to be getting more snaps in the back end of this game. But not able to make that catch. Good coverage there by Tracy Walker amongst the Lions there. Third down. Brett Hunt. Lee gets it off. Ball is floating and nearly intercepted by Will Harris. It's going to be an incompletion at the end of the day and a punt. And we're probably going to get the punt in about the same field position as that interception by Will Harris if he got both feet in bounds. So tie game, seven minutes left. We're outside. We find a modern St. Brown. It's Matt Stafford over 300 yards, potentially in his last game as a Detroit Lion. And what a performance it has been. Second down. A 
Monra saying, Brown, how about the game of Monra's putting together? Just making quite the crazy amount of catches in this one. We have Kenny on fire in this one. We have Amon on fire. Stafford pretty much is on fire as we run the ball with John Emery. Bringing up a big third down and three under four minutes to go. Tie game. Stafford against the three-man rush. Leaves the pocket with some space. He's able to find Ty Johnson for the first down. The patience of the veteran. Matt Stafford pays off as Stafford. Whoa. Next play tries to hit Amon St. Brown who... Uh, Decide to go his own way on that route as we get a Monra this time around. He runs the zig properly and he actually gets the first down on the short check down. Now it's a Monra in motion. First down and goal. Not able to get too far. Hargraves breaks off the Debo uh, block attempt right there and gets the tackle. Second down. It's Matt Stafford. He wants St. Brown one more time, but he's not able to make the catch. And we go to the two minute warning with a third down and goal from the nine yard line. Stafford gets the ball. Stafford to buy. Galladay cannot quite get that one. When no one could get that one as far away as it went. And now the field goal from Tucker McCann gives the Detroit Lions the lead. But potentially a squandered goal line opportunity could cost us this game. If the Cardinals can march downfield in under two minutes. With most likely the backup quarterback, Brett Hundley. As Chase Edmonds sets the offense up at the 27-yard line. So here is Hundley up first down. And as he throws in. It's going to be incomplete. Okuda had a chance to end it right there with a potential interception. Instead, it's second down. Hunley open. Finding Hawkins. He lost the ball, but it rolls out of bounds. So the Cardinals dodge another potential disastrous play. The drive stays alive. But for how much longer? But the way they're playing, that was nearly intercepted by Will Harris. Second down. Hunley, good pocket. Rolls into the left. Looking, looking. Nothing open. Here comes Hutchinson forcing him to throw the ball away. Now third down with a minute 27 left Cardinals love all of their timeouts but did they have anyone open Hunley popped and that's an easy interception but for who it's gonna be Eric Stokes jumping over his teammate Michael Wright and going in four six big pick six for the Detroit Lions two possession lead with a minute 16 left and that's gonna put Eric Stokes at double digit interceptions in his rookie season number 10 and touchdown number four for Eric Stokes as we now set up for one more defense to stop, hopefully to end this game. We'll see how much the Cardinals even press in this situation with their eyes looking more at wildcard weekend than trying to win against our Detroit Lions. Ely actually gets the run right there, so not too aggressive, but here they come right back with Hunley looking to pass. He's going to force it, and it's intercepted by Chase Lucas, and that should be ball game in this scenario unless we turn the ball over trying to be silly, trying to lateral the ball, trying to get like a top 10 play or something as we, we run the ball here with John Emery. The Cardinals have all their timeouts, so probably gonna run the ball once maybe twice but it looks like the Cardinals aren't even gonna call their timeout so this should be the final play as we hand it off to John Emery who goes down so that should do it so we're just gonna build the clock here and we're gonna grab victory number seven in the final game of the 2022 season but before we do that the Cardinals call timeout I don't know why but you know what one last snap for Matt Stafford salute to Matt as he takes a knee and leads the Lions to a victory leading the team back from down 14-0 for the second time time this season he also did it against the Eagles but of course we didn't win that game this time around though you know a bit cleaner and we end up winning this matchup so a lot of questions heading into the offseason for the Detroit Lions but some positives as we close the season out three wins in the last four games I mean really three wins to end and we've lost the Bears CPU which you know <laughs> what are you gonna do right but, um, yeah, I would say a solid game all around. And, you know, the questions in the offseason, what we're going to do with this team, we're going to end up having two picks in the top 15 in the draft. We're going to have a lot of cap space. We might have Drew Locke. So, you know, there's uh, a lot of fun upcoming for our Detroit Lions. A lot of... Um, positive as far as you know ways we could shake this roster up but you know there's also a way we could completely screw this up as well so we're gonna have to play our cards right in uh the upcoming weeks but that's gonna do it for the regular season hope you guys enjoyed um you know i mean i'm not you know if you guys enjoyed this but also thank you guys for sticking around i know this season's been rough for us and you know it was definitely rough at the first half of the season when like i literally just wasn't putting much of any effort into this game at all and I know some of you guys got pretty frustrated with the way I was playing. So hopefully hopefully the second half of the season was better for you guys. Because um, 
yeah, like I said, when I was when I was taking my break from YouTube and all that, I was just like, you know, I was just not into this game at all. So um, my apologies for that. But hopefully next season, you know, we can, um, you know, do better and have some fun with this as well. So shout out to Kenny Galladay for officially leading the league in receiving. And Amonra St. Brown nearly got number two right there. So um, shout out to Kenny and Amonra. So leave a like in the video if you guys enjoyed this one. Subscribe for more Madden 21 gameplays. And I'll catch you guys for um, either a recap of the playoffs. If you guys want to see that, let me know in the uh, comments if you guys want to see, like, potential a video uh, recapping the playoff action that happened in the CFM. If not, then we'll jump straight to our Lions offseason. So, uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys for whatever you guys want to see next.